Welcome to my studio. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to learn how to draw. My name is Linda Hale. Although I have two degrees in fine art and I've been teaching at Feather River College for over 10 years, I am continually improving and learning new things. The people usually feel that they can't draw, that they just don't have any talent. But learning to draw is something that anybody can do. And that's how this course is uh, designed. Designed to help those who feel like they can't draw based on all the different uh, steps and techniques, the five basic drawing skills you can learn to draw. And that's how this class is. It's patterned after the college course, uh, Drawing One, and with that purpose in mind. And that's what I really love about it. The advancements that my students have made, uh, they tell me that they, they just didn't think they could ever learn to draw, and yet by the end of the course, their progress has been phenomenal. Here are a few of my paintings that are works in progress of the local area. This one is of the Feather River by Rocky Point Road. This one is of Lake Davis, the Aspens at Lake Davis. And this one also is of the, the river in the local area. So learning to draw is similar to learning any new skill, such as playing a musical instrument. It involves learning techniques and it takes practice. This course is based on, like I said, the five basic drawing skills, and these skills all revolve around perception. So first of all, I'm going to uh, let you know that you want to have at least a number two pencil like you buy in the store. Or you can buy art pencils that um, are different thicknesses and different HB. But if, when you're just starting out, you can just use a regular pencil. And regular printer paper like um, you buy for a printer. And then when you progress more, you could get a sketch pad that um, you could use to do your sketches in. So, so let me go back to the um, five basic drawing skills. And you want to, uh, the first one is the perception of edges. And perception means you're, you're seeing them, you're noticing them. So in this painting, the edge of the mountains meets the edge of the sky. The edge of this meadow meets the bottom edge of the mountains, and so forth. The trouble is, people don't look at the details of edges. They'll make a mountain that just looks like a whole bunch of triangles. But yet, mountains have different shapes, different widths, and uh, so forth. And that's what makes it more interesting. And then the next one is perception of spaces. So, the space here, in between the bushes, on both sides of the river, the space of the river, the space here of the meadow, the space of the river here, um, things like that are important. And you don't want to repeat the same spaces or shapes over and over again um, because it makes it more interesting if you have variety. And then the next one is perception of relationships or proportions. And so these trees are in proportion to the mountains in the background and it shows that they're closer to the viewer. If a tree, a pine tree was put back here this big right next to these mountains, you, it would be way out of proportion. So you want to learn about size relationships between, between the different objects. And then perception of light and shadow. You can see the light is coming from here because the mountains have light on these sides and they have shadows on the other sides. Um, the trees will eventually all have more light like this one does on this side and this one does. More will, um, when I finish painting it, will have more light on one side so they look more three-dimensional um, and showing the different shadows. Learning to draw is similar to learning any new skill. There are different techniques and a lot of practice that's involved, just like learning to play a musical instrument. This course is, like I said, is based on the five basic drawing skills and they all revolve around perception. But before we start, I'd like to show you how you have to, uh, would want to hold your pencil. There's a basic uh, tripod grip. That's just like when you're um, <coughs> writing, writing notes, writing a letter, 
it's the same thing and so you're just going to get maybe more details precise lines then there's overhand grip that allows you to be a little bit looser you can hold it close to the tip or you can hold it further back and I really like it for drawing ovals, ellipses because you can do it very loosely you use your whole arm in, in this um, grip called the overhand grip then the underhand grip is one that I never use I find very awkward um, if you would like to try using it uh, more power to you it's not my thing and then the loaded overhand grip is where you're going to have your finger closer and then you're going to press harder so you're going to get darker lines and you can use it for shading so different ways to grip the pencil basic tripod grip the overhand grip the underhand grip not my favorite and the loaded overhand grip for making darker lines and shading okay the next perception is perception of light and shadow and notice in this painting here the bright highlights on the face and on the front of this woman and on the back of her head and on the side of her uh, shoulder and such uh, the tablecloth is very bright and yet there's shadows cast here and shadows on the back here of her dress and so this helps to make uh, the figures and the table everything looks more three-dimensional when you have lights and shadows and with this face you can see the light is coming from this direction there's light on um, his forehead on his nose uh, the nose is casting a shadow over here and there's more shadow on this side of his face you can see the shadow cast from his his head and his chin going across his shirt there and across his whole shoulder so these things adding the light and the shadows helps to make things look three-dimensional um, and then the last perception is of gestalt and that means the perception of the whole image not just looking at one part but looking at the whole image like we see with our eyes we see the whole thing um, so then what happens is people have a tendency to have stored childlike images in their mind um, say for example a pine tree many people think that this is a way that you would draw a pine tree but yet pine trees have branches that are different lengths and different widths and different spacing between if you notice here the space between each of these is basically the same there aren't any branches in the middle there aren't any details this is just a real quickie sketch um, of a pine tree but you can see that there's different spacings in between there's branches that come in front of the trunk and so it's quite a bit different from the other one and so what we're trying to do is help you to break away from childhood images preconceived ideas that you have stored in your mind so that you can start to learn to see what's really in front of you when you draw trees and landscapes when you draw rocks when you draw a river um, when you draw people um, if you're going to do a still life so um, all those things helps you to learn to draw things to look more realistically there are different types of line when you're drawing with a pencil you don't have to use the same thickness or thinness of a line you can vary the line and that makes for more interesting drawing um, there's bold line broken line a pure line lost and found line so each of these are a little bit different and they can be used for different purposes a bold line makes things really stand out this is a broken line here and it's like the one that Van Gogh did with the paintbrush he used little dashes with the paintbrush to um, show his starry night the swirly sky and then a pure line is like the one in Picasso's um, 
drawing of the girl, um, it gives you an idea. All the lines are pretty much the same thickness. And then the lost and found line is like this one here in Juan Greed's um, still life. You can see it's thick and thin and just about disappears. So that's why they call it lost. And then it's found again and it gets darker. And the way you do that is by pressing harder on your pencil. So you can start out lightly and then you can press real hard and then lift up and go light again. And here's some examples of thin and thick and thin and thick and it makes for a much more interesting you can um, use it for drawing tree branches you can use it for drawing like here in the still life there's so many things that can be applied with this uh, lost and found line the perception of edges is the first of the five basic drawing skills and in this drawing here you can see all of the edges all the details the little creases and so forth are all drawn and this is drawn basically with one line um, if it's done correctly I think they the people who did this actually picked up their pencil maybe one time here but so this is called a blind contour drawing and this exercise is one that you're going to do you're going to do a blind contour drawing of your hand in two positions and one of your tennis shoe um, what you're going to be doing is not looking at your paper at all. That's why it's called blind contour drawing. You look at the object you're drawing, you look at all the details, the edges of your hand, the edges of the parts of your shoe, and you're going to be drawing all of those edges with one continuous line, not picking up your pencil the whole time you're doing it, and not looking at your paper. So here's an example of one where the hand is out. Here's one of the example with the hand more like this. Here's one with the hand out like this. And here's one that I did. And as you can see, I was not <laughs> looking at the paper because I went off the paper as I was doing it. So I'm going to do another one on a larger piece of paper so you can get an idea of how to do it. So I'm going to hold my hand in a curled position like this. And I'm going to be turning and looking at it at this. I'm going to look at the paper one time just to see where I'm putting my my marker. And you can do this with marker, or you could do this with um, pencil. And so I'm not looking at all. It's hard to talk and draw at the same time. I'm not looking at all at my paper. And I'm drawing my fingers curled up towards my face. And so the point is not to have a very good drawing when you're done, but to have a drawing that has trained your eye to see all the details. all the edges that you're seeing. So, you can tell it doesn't look at all like a hand. Maybe the little bit of the beginning, my thumb, my finger bent over, this finger bent over, but as I got further out, it started to look not like my hand. But that's okay, because what you want is you want your eye was tr was starting to learn to see the details and the creases of the knuckle of my thumb and uh, the creases that are inside where my hand is my thumb is uh, bent and you can see the little joints there in the skin so this is an exercise that a lot of artists do over and over and over again some of them do it every single day before they start drawing to uh, retrain their eye and keep a sharp focus on, on details of edges. So you're going to be doing your hand. You're going to be doing your hand out like this, but you're not going to put your hand on the paper and just trace around it. 
you're going to put it um, away from your paper so that you're looking at your hand and not looking at your paper the whole time, not picking up your pencil. You can use marker or you can use pencil, either one. I'm using marker here for the camera because it shows up a little bit better. And then you're going to do another one with your hand curled up with your fingers sort of facing you. Then you turn away from the um, paper, look at your hand, and you're going to draw here without looking at your paper at all. Then your next assignment is going to be similar to this one here of my shoe. So you're going to take your shoe and since the shoe has so many details, one way to practice is just with your finger. So you, you have your shoe, and you're not going to touch your shoe. You're going to use your finger kind of like a pencil and just trace all the edges that you see. And it's sort of training your eye to be able to see what's there. And then you set your shoe away from your paper, and then you start drawing all the edges that you see with the pencil or you can use a marker and you do not pick up your pencil the whole time you're doing it until you're all done and if it doesn't look like a shoe when you're done that's okay maybe do it again and again and again the purpose is not to have a polished finished drawing the purpose is to be able to train your eye to be able to see the edges of things so you can see here this is not the shoe that I drew in this one, but you can see the little tab, the shoe that I actually did draw had a bigger tab. Um, so you can see some of the edges of the sole of the shoe and so forth. So this is what you're going to practice um, doing one of your shoe and two of your hand in two different positions for the next exercise to learn um, and train your eye to have a better perception of edges. So thank you for watching this video on the uh, five basic drawing skills and learning how to see in order to draw. And I'm going to try to have one of these um, videos uh, posted on the library website at least once a week. And if you have any questions, you have my email address. You can email me any questions you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.